guys, Arsenal do it. They beat Spurs in the North London derby 4-2. And I'm absolutely buzzing. I don't know what to do with myself because I must have watched Match of the Day about five times. I've watched all clips on the YouTube over and over again. I can't get enough. I love it. So let's talk about it. Arsenal have answered the questions of whether they're contenders. They've overlapped Spurs now and they're in fourth place. And guys, what a game. Absolutely buzzing. There's so much to talk about. But let's first of all just say that this happened because of one thing, the fans. The fans were the 12th man. And I've always said Arsenal played down to the level of the competition and people have complained about the first half performances. Well, guys, we've got to take onuses because a lot of that is on us. Let's be honest. I said before the game that I predicted that they'll come out and play hard in the first half, just like they did against Liverpool, because the two defining factors were that the fans were up for it because they knew the importance of the game. And against Liverpool, that's exactly what got the players riled up. And what happened was the players responded to it. It's as simple as that. It's not rocket science. The players responded to it. Could you imagine being on that pitch and listening to the level of noise that was coming from the, the stadium and the crowd? honestly there was only one way it could have gone and I don't know how it must have felt for the Spurs players but they were on the back foot from the first whistle you could see straight away the way that we were attacking and closing them down it was like we have to have the ball then if you have the ball that's not good enough we're gonna come and take it from you and that was the mentality we had in the first 25 minutes yeah, I was a bit worried about us getting a bit gassed because we put so much in. But then you think of how legless Iwobi and Makaterian was. They kind of ran themselves into the ground. And then the substitutes, that's what made a key factor. He's not afraid of changing anything. If Emery sees anything that he doesn't like, he'll change it. He's not going to ponder on it. He's not going to wait till the 70th minute and then make a change. He's going to change it and change it now. Spurs defended really well. They, they had four or five shots that they deflected off the line. Um, it could have been 3-0 to Arsenal in the first half. The two Spurs goals, well, the first free kick from Eriksen that um, made Dyer head the ball in. First of all, Leno should have done better. You never get beaten on your near post. And secondly, it wasn't a free kick. I mean, Song went down just like he did with the penalty. Song went down... With no, with, there was no contact. He just went down and started rolling over. They get the free kick, they score. On the penalty, you could see Rob holding the way he, he actually he didn't slide into the player, he slid in front of the player so that he could nail off the ball. And what had happened was, even as he was passing Song, there was no contact. And then Song goes down, and there's a massive gap in front of. Uh, the two players but the referee's standing behind so he doesn't see the gap he just sees a player going in and one going down and honestly if that's next year if that's var it's not a penalty and spurs fans even knew they were that they were fortunate but man me love it why even when they were two one up spurs you knew that it just they, they they couldn't sustain the amount of pressure arsenal was putting on them the coach obviously knows that this is a game that you have to battle and the team battled and he's making a statement to everybody in the squad to say if you want to be a part of these games I want to see you fight on the field and him not even lining Ozil up as a sub and making all these excuses about the back I don't really care but the fact of the matter is the coach Emery is making a statement that this is how you have to be in order to fit in done Done, done, done. My message is sent out to all the players. If you ain't going to give me this, you ain't playing. And that is pretty clear now. One thing I don't understand is where does that leave Ramsey? Because Ramsey, who knows what London Dub is all about. And this isn't the first game. Ramsey's come on and played quite well in a few games. Where does that leave him now? Does the, the member agent realistically has been waiting for Arsenal to come back to the table because it was it was Emery that withdrew the offer. So do they come back with another offer? 
I'm not so sure because I, I think Emery can still feel like Smith Rowe can turn into a Ramsey type player. Um, we saw what happened with him the other day in, in, in Europe and you play him amongst these world class players and he's going to deliver. But that's not withstanding Ramsey coming on and getting the two assists that he did. Ramsey was big time in this game. He turned the, he turned the tide. The amount of pressure and space that he create him and Lacazette created out wide and through the middle. I mean, honestly, if you look at uh, um, Torreira's last goal, they they were out in space. Abamyang's actually running back. He finds a slip ball through Torreira, and Spurs are, are pretty much got five men um, line, so they're defending it pretty well. But the fact of the matter is, Abamyang's got two men on him. So you can see, even when he plays Torreira through on the slip ball and Torreira goes in on goal, Abamian still has two players on him. So these guys, Lacazette, Ramsey, they're pulling players and Spurs are really all over the place because they don't know who to mark, who's going to be, you know, they're not seeing these runs coming in from Torreira, from Ramsey. They're just not seeing it because they're key, keyed on Arsenal's main threats. And seriously, guys, this is, when was the last time Spurs let in four goals? <laughs> and and it could have been six or seven. So for me, the result doesn't show the true nature of the game. Man, this is where we're at. And Arsenal fans have always kind of known that this 19-game unbeaten streak isn't out of context. I mean, when was the last time in all the other guys had a 19-winning game on streak? If it was that easy, everyone would be able to do it. For real. But they're not. So Arsenal must be doing something special. You can't no longer say who have they played. You can't do that. They've recovered more points from any team in losing positions than anyone else. The, the, Emery has got it sorted out. For me, the key man at, for the game, who was my man of the match, was a bang me am. And I talked about the assist for the goal that he made. And that is just something we haven't seen. Remember, before this game, he's had one assist all season. One. And that tells you that the guy is not holding the ball up very well. He's not seeing the field. He's not getting himself in the position to help other players. In this game, he was. And let's talk about defensively. He had five tackles. That led the game. No one in the game had more tackles than Aubameyang. Imagine that. More tackles than Torreira? So that's why I see Sky and a few people giving Torreira a man of the match. But nah, for me, the man of the match was Aubameyang because of his all-round game. The way he brought others into play, he was selfless in terms of dropping back and bringing in players running forward and getting beyond the line. The five tackles says it all. He didn't stand up being the anchor man. He, he dived into the midfield and tried to win the ball back for his team and helped to dominate the midfield in possession. The, the, the two goals were just, well, the second goal was Henri-esque. It was clutch. Um, Loris was planted. Planted, didn't move. And I absolutely just loved it. But this means so much to the fans. And guys, let me get one thing clear. This is not our, F F our FA Cup final. It's Spurs FA Cup final. Because we win FA Cup finals. We win trophies. So to say that this is our FA Cup, I've been hearing some Spurs fans say, yeah, this is your final. No, we know what a final is. And we know how to win one. You don't. So this is your FA Cup final. Trust me. Anyway, now I got that out of the way. So guys, this game was absolutely brilliant for us. It's the manner which Arsenal pressed and powered Spurs into submission. It's just a remarkable change in the team and further evidence under the transformation of Unai Emery. And guys, seriously, the way he introduced his substitutions, which was beyond what we really wanted, it was to dramatic effect of the game, and it's been doing that all season long. This guy can change games. He's a tactician. He's meticulous in his methods. If you're not on the ball, you're out. And we love that. But guys, we move on. We've got Man United next. And for me, that means everything because we've got the Burnley at home, full up home over the Christmas. I think our Christmas running isn't gonna be too bad. But we just need to get this Man United game out of the way. And we have a terrible record at Old Trafford. Bad record at Old Trafford. So we need to get past that. For me, that's a big game. And Lacazette is well rested. 
Um, Ozil hasn't even played since before the international break. Um, and also, I want to shout out, Mkhitaryan put a lot in in the first half. He didn't get his just rewards, but he was much improved. And I've been a big critic of Mkhitaryan from day one. He's obviously heard the, the, the words coming out saying, who got the worst deal? Arsenal and Manchester United with Sanchez and Mkhitaryan. And Mkhitaryan put a lot in in the first half. So big dues to you. But May United up next. Like and subscribe, guys. Don't forget to click that bell if you want to find out when my videos are dropping. Appreciate the love. Let's move on.